Welcome to a very special night. Um, I want to thank uh, HowlRound TV. I called BJ when we were planning this and said, you, you know, we've worked with you a lot with very, very important questions about theater and we're just going to celebrate tonight. We're going to celebrate John O'Saws. We're going to celebrate this opening. And before I could get the third reason, I wondered he says we're in, Philip. So, so here we are. Here we are. And I'm here with my favorite human on the planet. Teacher, mentor, friend, adopted father to, uh, to celebrate one of our favorite theater directors and to also honor some of the most, three of the most prolific American theater people. Uh, Jim Nicola. Rob Orchard and Molly Smith. I was here uh, Monday a week ago at Molly's salon, and at one point uh, they asked each other, What's the future of American theater? And they both agreed that it's time for us to look beyond these borders to see ourselves in a a global fellowship, um, and that's what this night is celebrating. So I hope you enjoy it. We're going to be back in 15 or 20 minutes and present the first uh, annual, I hope it will be annual, Kwan Ye Arno Global uh, Appreciation to uh, Jim and Rob and Molly, uh, and it really touches me to, play, to have my name associated with the woman who was my mentor that I introduced you to, yeah, to and yes. was both of our mothers. So yep. enjoy this wonderful night tonight. We're certainly enjoying it. Here. Well, it means it's an honor to be honored, of course. <laughs> you know, what could be, what could be more? delightful you know when you you, know, you spend a lot of time in in, in the global world and uh, and it's nice to have it recognized and it's nice to have organizations like the trust for mutual understanding acknowledged as well yeah i mean you really, you really championed that yeah i mean I, I gave him his first project in the states yep um which was uh it was uh, a revival of his mother courage, mother courage. yeah that he did in, in budapest I remember sitting at that production and thinking, okay, we gotta get that. And then I started casting it with the company. <laughs> so I was always gonna play Mother Courage, you know, and you had it all, get it all lined up. Um, and uh, and then he was the resident director for a while. He did yeah. five projects with us, and he was also head of our little training institute. You know, that partnership with the Moscow Art Theater. He's the only Hungarian director I've worked with. I've worked with a lot of Polish and many Romanian directors and a number of Russian directors. Um, and he, it was always trouble. I mean, when I first met him, you know, it was things were bubbling up in bad ways yeah. in Hungary. Um, and he, you know, he had his antenna, you know, well aimed. Uh, and it was, it was great to give him that opportunity to come to the States and begin to create a foundation for him. Changed every, I mean, you changed so many yeah. so many people's lives, I think, by yeah. bringing him here. Yeah. I mean, you changed the way I saw the theater. Ah, it's great to be here. It's great to, it's great to be working with him. He's got a lot of amazing stories to tell. And the thing that always impressed me about Philip is that you know, he was an actor, he was a director, he was a producer, but he self-invented, I think, being an instigator. 
on an international level, an instigator of theater and dance and, and performance in general. And, uh, and the way he did that was to bring people together one by one, which is just totally amazing to me that he's had the energy and the insight and the inspiration to keep doing that all this time. So I'm very pleased to be here. He's receiving one of the awards tonight. We go way back. <laughs> um, sure do. Had many, many, many long deep talks. In the summer, in the summer, in the summer. I was trying to remember, remember when I maybe first heard about you. Before I met you, long before I met you, I knew of you. Tom and I were in Berlin this weekend to see a bunch of work. And certainly it was the theater project. And I think I really focused on you with the whole NEA thing. Maybe 80, 81? No, 90. Yeah, but I knew you before. I knew of you before that. And he and I were talking about about this award? Oh, well, I actually think this award and this event are truly, even though there are honorees like me and my colleagues, Rob and Molly, it's really honoring this guy who has um, changed the world and changed my world specifically. Um, over decades, and I, 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 I say that and it sounds so uh, banal, but it's profound what this man's impact has been. Uh, and I'm just speaking personally now, I'm not even going to try to address him in the world. But I've been talking to a friend of mine about who writes musicals. One of the things I'm has stuck with me is thinking about uh, Helen Shaw, the theater critic for The New Yorker, wrote a sentence saying, the most dangerous place to be is in a theater seat. And I don't think I ever really completely appreciated that until this man took me on and changed my life. Yeah, I'm very excited about uh, the work that uh, Mr. Arno is doing and bringing people together and, and sharing the voices of uh, in, in the time of war of these Ukrainian playwrights that are kind of throwing plays at uh, the tyrants in, the, in Russia. Um, on one hand, very fruitless, but another, on another hand, provides hope that is very much needed today. Can you tell us a little bit about your perch at the State, formerly at the State Department, and why this kind of international exchange is so important? Right. Um, well, I worked for the State Department for 30 years. I'm now retired. And um, much of that time, I was a public diplomacy officer and responsible for educational exchanges, professional exchanges, and that sort of thing. And um, I mean, just in a word, uh, there's nothing like seeing it with your own eyes. This is why we bring people to this country so they can, you know, see this crazy country that we live in and, and judge for themselves what some of the reality is. That's certainly the, my primary take, and it applies to all different professions. And what was your first encounter with Mr. Arnold? Because um, you two are sort of partners in crime. Partners in crime, the infamous Philip Arnold uh, and I worked together in Moscow. Um, I put together a, a huge festival, a celebration of culture in the United States that traveled all over um, Russia. And from 20, 2011 to 2012, uh, things like the Chicago Symphony, the Gamuti, etc., etc. Philip's part of it was to um, put together a series of plays that were then translated uh, for the stage in Russia. Mm -hmm. And to this day, uh, some of those plays are still playing in regional theaters in Russia. Um, perhaps with the current political situation a little less so, but uh, I mean, up to the up to the time of the Ukraine invasion, surely you could still see uh, some of the. And these are off-Broadway plays, not you know, not the great historical plays, but the newer newer playwrights. Yeah, I'm very glad to be here with the pioneer. He's the pioneer of the theater and the, the big explorer of the Eastern Europeans, Philippe Arnaud. 30 years ago we met. 
Seria mesmo? Oh, não, it was, não, it was not Seria. It was in 1999, 24 years. 24 years. 24 years. And I'm very glad. And I am very honored. Mother Courage in Budapest and Molly and Rob Orchard both came up to him afterwards and he came here to direct Street Gone in Desire. That was an extraordinary performance. People still remember what happened here with this Street Gone right now. Yeah. He's back tackling. Yeah, I'm very happy to be yeah. This is your fault. Okay. No, Let's make a deal. Yeah, it's your fault. It's always your fault. <laughs> so I'm very, very happy. I'm absolutely I've been watching. I was here for the first table read. I've been to two rehearsals. And the whole time I was here, I never heard Janos refer to the actors as his uh, uh, cast. He always referred to them as his company. Yeah, it's a company. We created a company. In four you know. weeks. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, four, five, three, two. Uh, uh, and you know, all the company. So we all know we would like to stay together somehow. Yeah, really. It, it, I'll travel anywhere to see it. I'll travel anywhere if at I can stay alive. Yeah. Yeah. We're just trying to uh, continue that. We're trying to keep that momentum from Rosamund Gilder through Martha, through you, and then through the uh, into the next generation, so that we can have that alliance, a strong personal alliance between theater people, so they can uh, remember their mission, which is to connect with. Uh, each other around the world and to build a world community. Um, shall I say what an honor it is to be with Philip on his birthday? Celebrate. And uh, how excited I am to see angels and also to celebrate the recipients of the wonder. And this wonderful Yeah, can't wait to see it. I saw Molly's work in Amsterdam the first time. While you were still in uh, Alaska, and then when she took over a read, I called her up and she said, Look, I've just made this big announcement. I'm doing American plays. I said, Well, I think it might be interesting to have you look at some of these directors that can give a different perspective. And she's had quite a history uh, with the Anosh. She's responsible single-handedly for getting him out of Hungary. He's now living in America, and I hope we'll have. Uh, you know, she's 65 now, and he's got many good years of creation left. Too. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Well, congratulations tonight to Philip. It's great that you brought so many people in to honor this production. I really appreciate it that, you, that you've done that, that you've done that for Janusz, because we want to make sure he's got the best launch possible in this country. So congratulations on it, Barbara. It's all, yep. it's all you too. Yep. It's all you too. And thanks for the award. I feel really honored about it. Does it have both your names on it? Oh, cool. OK, that's even better. And what? Real sons for family. That's great. We are extremely excited to be honoring three of the most incredible folks of the American theater. Um, and I am particularly happy to be standing here alongside my friend, my mentor, my surrogate father, grandfather figure, and just my family, um, who is responsible. Whenever anybody says to me, how did you do X? How did you end up Y? I usually just say it's Philip's fault. <laughs> so it's your fault we're here tonight. So I'm going to hand it over to you so you can speak on behalf of yourself. What I want to do is uh, take 
tell you that this is an incredible uh, event, having Anos come here to this theater and to visit uh, a place that he came some 20 years ago and directed one of the most um, courageous performances of um, street art and desire. And then Molly took a lot of incoming on it. And at the same time, about half of the theater people in this town found it revelatory that they had really seen somebody who was thinking way outside the box. Um, I was in uh, Poland, Barbara was a Fulbrighter in Hungary, and I had a little uh, extra money from the Trust for Mutual Understanding, and now she is the director, <laughs> and uh, brought her to it's join me. It's his fault, I said, it's his fault. <laughs> and to join me. And uh, the first thing we did is we sat down with Yana in a restaurant, the first meeting we had. And Yano says, Philip, you've got to help get me out of this country. And he opened his notebook and showed a, a site that listed five homosexuals, Jews, and Bolsheviks in the arts, with a picture of him and that with you know, his family, and it was all of them. Um, he didn't, we weren't able to get him out then. And that was, must have been 15 years ago, Jan. Um, now, when Molly really stepped in, and Molly and Suzanne gave him a place to live for three months, and he now is able to bring his whole family here. I watched uh, this piece develop from the first reading table read to saw a couple of rehearsals. Not once did Janos talk about his cast. He always used the term, my company. And the real celebration tonight is this man's great artistry. Thank you, Janos. Thank you. My mentor uh, was Martha Parmier, who I loved, uh, who was a partner, uh, and who I worked with for most of 40 years. Uh, when Martha died, uh, I was asked if I would write her book. I didn't write a book. Her nephew and caregiver Will Wadsworth ended up writing a really important five-volume history of theater in the Cold War. And when I and really represented, I got to meet more of the Wadsworth family. And I got to, to speak with them about how much she meant to the world. And I think sometimes people in their own family didn't quite get it all. Uh, and so uh, we've uh, got these awards. Can I have them, please? Uh, can I give I'd like to ask the first award is going to a dear, dear friend for over 25 years. Uh, the founder of the longtime director of the uh, New York Theatre Workshop. We've traveled together uh, to Jim O'Quinn. It's the Kwame Arno Global Theatre Award. Okay. <clears throat> it's very hard to get me to say a few words. <laughs> so I've been thinking about this. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, well, first of all, it's just uh, overwhelming to be in this building where I spent 
some extraordinary time and next to this man who also has provided me with extraordinary time. Um, but I'm thinking about someone who I met and engaged with who is a, uh, a shaman, I would say, in my life, uh, Garland Wright, a wonderful, wonderful director, no longer with us. Um, but he told me one day that um, a little boy from, a little gay boy from Eisenhower, Texas, um, that everything he understood about life, being a human, history, art, everything, ideas, psychology, he learned in a theater seat. And that really, really stuck with me because I think it's the same for me. I grew up in the frame of American theater and particularly American musical theater because that's what was available. <clears throat> And then this man, in 1995 I was 40-ish, <laughs> invited me to participate in a, an exchange program with the Dutch. And it was my foot, you know, I had studied in school in London for two years. But, you know, English theater, American theater, we have a lot of differences, but we're very basically the same. It's a literary form. And when I got to the Netherlands, I realized, oh, <laughs> this is about the director. Um, and there were so many things that were revelations to me. And it was it just happened to be that it was the Dutch. I think if I'd gone to um, Brazil, uh, I would have had the similar experience of, of eyes opened and um, the art expanded for me. And I think it changed everything for me as a leader of an organization. Um, I felt it was important to uh, <clears throat> make an effort to get American artists out of their environments and have the experience I had, and for other artists to come in as well. So all of that is Philip. He changed my life. Thank you, Philip, and happy birthday. <laughs> and thank you for this. I almost have to put Rob Marchand as a mentor um, for me. The incredible journey Rob had that went through the center of some of the most important theater, looking beyond our borders for decades, first at Yale and at Harvard with Bernstein. Uh, and when he retired, he got pulled out of retirement and created the Arts Emerson Project. And, and in Australia, this Howard on TV is something that Bob was instrumental in making a piece of Arts Emerson. Uh, he was always willing to listen to me, and he always gave me incredibly good advice. Rob, I thank you very much and present you with the Martha Cornyn. Thank you, my friend. Um, you know, this is the first of many, I hope, um, Martha Cornyn and Philip Arnaud Awards. Um, I think this evening should be about them. Um, they're the catalysts for all of what we've done in this room. Um, I wouldn't have met Jonas Sanz if it wasn't for you. Um, among other, multiple other great artists from Poland. You're the only great artist from Hungary I know, but I'm sure there are others. <laughs> Many. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been doing this for a while. The first international project I did was at Yale. Um, it was an adaptation of Dostoevsky's The Possessed um, by and directed by um, the great Polish film director and stage director, Andrzej Wajda. And we did it with um, Meryl Streep and with Christopher Lloyd. And when I think back on that, I think, oh, wow, it's downhill from there. <laughs> But we we kept at it um, primarily because we work with the resident company and we perform 
the rotating repertory. And we had times in the year at the ART where we didn't have access to a theater, so we just went someplace as we traveled. It was an effort to keep the company employed, uh, to stimulate them with doing their work in front of different audiences and different cultures. And they were mostly festivals. So we had an opportunity to see work from elsewhere in the world, to get to know great artists, great directors. Um, and we went to 15 countries on four continents, oftentimes multiple times over the course of 35 years. Um, and then, um, as I got to know many great directors through Philip's kind nudging, um, over the course of those 35 years, we did 80, 85 productions directed by these great foreign artists. Um, and uh, they became part of our family. Um, they still are. Um, and uh, there's something about the collaboration that comes about with an artist coming from one culture, uh, moving into another culture, and the adaptation that has to go on, the negotiation, I mean that in the most generous sense, an embrace of those differences. Um, that creates work that I think breaks through the comfort zones and the conventional barriers of not only aesthetics in this country, but also structures. Um, and, uh, and you move to another level. Um, and it is a struggle. Um, I think great art, the best art comes from a struggle. If everything is comfortable, you know, the third week of a rehearsal period, well, for most most you know artists in Europe, the third week is they're still around the table. <laughs> they're not on their feet. Um, the struggles are, are the important part, and that's where the breakthroughs come through. And I've I've been blessed to have been part of some of these struggles, and I mean that in the most positive sense. Um, and it's been it's been the great great you know blessing for me. So thank you. Thank you. My first song Molly's were in Amsterdam, and it was not the one we were in the stage. It was the work of her uh, Alaskan company of Perseverance. And when she came to Washington, I called her up and asked her to get on the flying plane. And she said, What about just announced the great commitment to the American theater with this theater. And uh, we had breakfast and we talked and the rest, as they say. It's history. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put this here because I actually have a speech. <laughs> so it's so great and such a pleasure to see everybody here tonight. It really is a thrill to see so many faces that I've known for so many years and people who have been doing this kind of deep, dangerous, and difficult work in the world. You know, we called it for a while a way to work culturally in a whole different way and a way to uh, work tying countries together. And I absolutely loved Martha Cognier. And I love Philip Arnaud. So receiving an award with their names on it is a great honor for me. Years ago, when I was at Perseverance Theater in Alaska, a company I started, she sent me to Latin and South America to meet with artists. And while on the trip, we traveled to Mexico, Colombia, Argentina, and Brazil. It was a remarkable trip with people like Renee Bush, John Dillon, and we met with writers, soap opera film stars who uh, demanded to get more money from us in terms of their work as artists. So it was very difficult explaining to them that we didn't actually have anything to do with their union. Uh, entrepreneurs, uh, puppet makers, and yes, those relationships were formed. And we then did a new adaptation of Jose Donoso's Obscene Bird of Night, uh, adapted by Derek Cloud and produced both at Perseverance Theater in Alaska and then again at Trinity Rep. It was a wild and life-changing experience. And later she sent me to Japan for
for another life-changing experience. So with Philip, I've traveled to Hungary with both Jim Nicola, Rob Orchard, twice into Russia, which included being kidnapped in a taxi with Suzanne and uh, ask us the story because it is one of the great stories of the American theater <laughs> and also how we got out of the taxi is a fascinating story. But what you will see tonight is really the outcome of one of these trips because I wanted to bring in a European director who would be able to interpret our American work in a very, very different way than our American artists. And in Hungary, Suzanne and I saw an absolutely brilliant production of Mother Courage. And Janusz probably remembers this, but I think he was, he seemed a little bored and a little bit of an auteur when he and I met. I remember we were sitting having coffee and he had his legs crossed and he was kind of, whatever, it's just American. Um, and then, <laughs> all right, you can respond to me. Uh, but now he is uh, family to me with his family, the whole family, our family to me, and to Suzanne. Uh, we brought Yana to uh, Arena to Rex Streetcar named Desire. You heard what Philip said. It was absolutely one of the best productions I had ever seen. And it rocked this theater. And it rocked this city because people had such divergent viewpoints. Marty, you remember, of that production. Over 20 years later, he's back with us with Angels in America. It is a fever dream of a production with deep and dangerous acting, and it takes us into the heart of Kushner's drama. And uh, 30 years later, all of a sudden, we have this fantastic reinvention of it. I'm so happy to be here with you tonight. Janusz, uh, I am thrilled you all are going to see the work on stage. And Philip, thank you, because Philip, as you all know, is one of the great internationalists. And uh, thank you for recognizing me for this Lifetime Achievement Award. It might be that you're the director of all this, but I remember Jim Nicola saying something at the end of his talk. It was in passing. He said, happy birthday. Yeah. Right? Oh, look what we have here. So Philip's birthday is coming up. It'll be at 82. And so we wanted to uh, have a little song, get a little, a little blowing out of the candles, sir. So, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Thank you. 